These pictures are pretty good. I want to go see them on my computer. Not the PC. No, no, no. The 64. Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to view high quality JPEGs, JPGs, on a Commodore 64 with no PC as a middleman. I'm going to use all old tech here, no new tech. The newest tech we're going to use in this experiment is a Palm Zire 71, which was released 20 years ago in 2003. So that's not exactly new tech. Neat fact, this PDA was the first consumer PDA for under $100. But anyhow, the nice thing about this, which is going to help us with a Commodore 64, is you can change the resolution. The default is 640 by 480, but you can change that and drop it down to 320 by 240. Pretty nice, and you'll see why. Gonna take some pictures at a local park. Sorry about the noise. I try to take some video of taking pictures, but that may not work out so well. Before we continue, I just want to explain this is kind of a light tutorial or how to. This is more of a demonstration, although I do explain some things, but it's not really deep how to. So if there's anybody has questions or would like me to do a follow up video with more in depth information on all the nuts and bolts, let me know. Anyhow, I have the SD from the Palm Zire inserted, and here's the pictures I took from the local park. These extra large thumbnails, they look pretty good. One thing to note is, as you could probably tell here, that there's light streaking through trees, which is a pretty nice effect. Not sure how it's going to look when we get that blown up on a CRT or the other TV, the LCD TV. But we can quickly look at them. Let's go back to the 64. Okay, first off here, we're going to do a baseline on a stock system. This is an NTSC C64 with a 1541-2 disk drive. There is no Jiffy DOS on either of these. I want this to be completely stock for the baseline. Here we have a shielded RF cable for the RF input into the television. This television is not perfect. I don't know if you can see it, but the colors are a bit washed out in the bottom right. But for that size CRT, that's about the best I have at the moment. And then for the LCD, we're using composite and coming out of the AV. So this will be our baseline, and we're going to time it. So you know the baseline time on a stock system. I'm also going to use a JPEG that was provided by the JUDPEG creator. Right, I'm using an old floppy right now that I've had laying around for a long time. So I have a JUDPEG disk and JPZ here is that's the super CPU version, that's the way I named it. And JPZ8 is the original stock version of the program. Pup.jpg is what the programmer of this program included as a sample JPEG, and that's what I'm going to be loading. In this camera mode, you can see a little bit more I'm talking about this. Old TV is kind of washed out and the color is a little off, but for a CRT in that size, like I said, that's about the best I can do. For the JPEG program, look down in the description, you'll see a link to it. So we're going to load this JPZ8. I'm 
Okay, let's run. Right, we want that pup dot jpg and right now no offsets this is a column offset and a row offset we're not going to use any offsets right now i'll probably explain that a little later just stop watch it probably won't hit it perfect but you'll get an idea and let's return Four minutes, 45 seconds. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, now let's get a baseline with a super CPU and a floppy. And then after that, we're going to get rid of the floppy. Oh, I should mention for this, the turbo is on, but the Jiffy DOS is off. This drive doesn't have Jiffy DOS anyway, so it really doesn't matter if I just want to explain. No Jiffy DOS. We're going to get stock drive speeds. Okay, we should see an improvement. And away we go. Wow, 41 seconds. I don't even know if we're going to get an improvement with the SD. You must have a fast loader built in this program. Okay, we're going to do one more thing before we get into the meat of this demonstration. This short little segment, we have this 15412 set as device 9, and this SD2IEC set as device number 8. And we have this plugged in just for the Jiffy DOS. All right, let's get a directory of 8. We want the CD into that DCIM. That's where all the pictures are. Now we can switch from upper to lower case. Leave that there. Now we're going to make a few copies, so let's set the destination device. It's now the destination device. And now let's copy some files. Whoops, made a mistake. Alright, let's switch to our final configuration for this video. Alright, no more floppy drive. Just using an SD to IEC. Let's get a directory. Let's CD into that DCIM. Get a directory. Switch to lowercase. Let's load JPZ. Alright, let's load that pup.jpg one last time. No offsets. Hmm, miss it by a second. Missed that by a second too, but oh my goodness. Missed it by a second on purpose, but oh my goodness. They were down to 13 seconds. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's that's pretty sweet. Using an SD with uh, Jiffy DOS, that, that, that is sweet. I also want to point out that with modern video cameras or phones, 
they eliminate flicker. This is using a technique called IFLI, which is an interlace. And watching it here live on an original CRT, there's some flicker, especially in the real white or light areas. Not so much in the dark, but there's a flicker. It's not horrible, but it's there. Unfortunately, there's no real way to capture that. I have old school camcorders, but if I was to use those, not only would I get that little shimmer or flicker, CRTs put off really bad strobing, which is potentially dangerous for people with certain conditions. So just kind of to explain, if you're watching it on a CRT live, you get a little bit of a shimmer or a flicker. Right, here's our final configuration for this video. AV out to the LCD TV. Let's see through CPU and SD to IEC. That's it. There's no perfect way to record this to upload. This is probably the best method to demonstrate. It's best to see it in person, especially with the CRT. If I had to do this video again, I'd probably show a lot less of the CRT. Maybe show it once and that's it. It looks pretty good in person, but there is absolutely no way to recapture that by recording it. Anyhow, let's go through each of these pictures I took at the local park and you can see how they look. I'm going to give none of them a column offset. I'm going to give all but one a row offset of two. I'm only going to give one a row offset of three. The rest are going to a row offset of two. That I like. That's pretty good. Okay, let's move on. This is what I'm going to give three. Here's the plaque. There you see the light streaming in through the trees. Came through pretty good, I think. Moving on. You can clearly tell what that is. It's pretty good. That came out pretty good. The bridge looking the other way. The gazebo. the entrance sign. No swimming. Last one. That came out good. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, this wasn't a perfect video, but I think a few out there might appreciate it. If you do, please let me know. Please like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. But on this one, more importantly, let me know down in the comment section if you'd like to see more videos like this, specifically about being able to take pictures and display directly on your Commodore without needing any middleman.
I've got the idea for at least one more video in mind, maybe two, but kind of like to see that people appreciate this. You know, maybe a threshold of something like 300 views, 8 to 10 likes, and maybe three people asking me in the comment section and do another video like this. Like I said, this one didn't come out perfect, and I, I, I have some ideas, some things to show, and there's more to this than what I've shown, so thank you for watching. See you on the next video.